Good morning, everyone. Yeah, the recording is started. OK. Welcome to BC110 on the class on identity, identity in Christ. So, so far, what we have covered, we have covered on first two chapters. The first chapter we covered on the revelation of being in Christ. So what did we cover under this? Knowing who am I in Christ is who I'm really are. Uh, we spoke about John 15, as we abide in Christ and Christ been abiding in us. And we also covered on the wine and the branches. Then we looked into the foundation of the world, Ephesians chapter 1. We saw the finished work of the cross and our identity in Jesus Christ. And we also saw, uh, we have been blessed with every spiritual gifts in the heavenly realms. And we saw the mystery been revealed, that is God's work through Jesus Christ. How God redeemed the whole world through the work that Jesus did on the cross. And this plan was at the beginning of the world itself that you, you and I will be redeemed through Christ. And then we see um, how the growing knowledge of being in Christ is. So with that, we moved on to the second chapter where we covered on the new creation in Christ, where the old things have passed away and we have become new creation in Christ. And if anyone is in Christ, is a new creation. And when we talk about new creation, we're talking about the new life, the born again life that we have in Christ. So we see the Holy Spirit when we are born again, we have been baptized by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit starts in dwelling with us and we are the new creature we are the new species or we have a new identity in christ then we spoke about how the old nature the old things of us our behavior our nature have been passed over okay we have been made new creation we have been born again we have this new identity that we carry in christ and you know the scripture that talks about that old things have passed away behold you have become new in christ and again here we see the growing into the full measure of christ it is a process it is a process and with that we will move on to the third chapter third chapter talks about justification in Christ. You have been justified in Christ. Now, what does justification mean to you? Sorry? Being made right. Anyone from the first year online class? You can post on the chat. Justification mean, being justified mean, what does it mean to you? Being made righteous, made perfect, standing before God as if one has not sinned. Thank you, Nina. We also have a Nina in on online. Okay, okay, okay. Justification means justified means just as if you have not sinned. So when we are in Christ, we have been justified, justified as though we have not sinned. But what is happening in in general or in natural? What happens? Many believers, those who have accepted Jesus as a Lord and Savior but haven't renewed their mind, they still struggle with a sense of unworthiness, with a sense of shame. What happens? They have been they're carrying this hurt within them. What's happening? There's a saying, you remember? Hurting people hurt others. They try to go and hurt others. There may not be any reason, but just because they don't have this... A uh, sense of being accepted, 
sense of unworthiness, sense of shame, there's some kind of gap that they carry within themselves. So they have this condemnation or self-denial. So they are not, because they're not able to overcome, what happens? It has been shown in a different way to the people around them. So what we need to do, we need to be justified. How to be justified? Bring it to God. Bring it to Jesus. There's one thing we need to realize is there's nothing hidden. We cannot hide anything from God. The only way that we can overcome this area is by bringing it to God and surrendering that area to Him. Lord, I don't want to be the way that I am. I don't want to carry this condemnation that is my past life, that is my old nature. And when we are born again, when we receive Jesus as a Lord and Savior, we need to renew our mind, put on the new man. What is a new man? One who carries the fruit of the Spirit. So what is the fruit of the Spirit? Being loving, being kind, being gentle, being long-suffering, being patient, being self-control over ourselves. So these are the fruit of the Spirit that one should see within themselves. So as we emphasize on that, we need to embrace our new identity in Christ. We need to check ourselves day in and day out. Are we reflecting Christ in our nature, in our character? Will Jesus do the way I do? Am I reflecting Christ's nature in my life? It can be in any area. So what happens? Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So who has chosen us? God has chosen us. Now how, what is the expectation from us? God is a holy God. And we are reflecting his image so how we need to be? We need to be holy and we need to be blameless. So how do we show this holiness and blameless, blamelessness in our character? The nature that we live our life every day should be the nature of Christ being reflected in us. So how do we do it? There is a process. It is a process where we consciously make an effect to be more like Christ in us. We are not the old person. That old nature has passed away. We are a new, be new creation in Christ. So the word here, holy or being without blame, simply means faultless, being blameless, unblameable or without blemish, without spot. Can I request you all to turn to Colossians chapter 1, verse 20 to 22. On our notes, we are on page 31. Colossians chapter 1, verse 20 to 22. I'll read. And by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. And you, who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. So what does it say here? The scripture talks about we were once enemies, but now what's happened? We have been reconciled with God. How are we reconciled with God? Through Christ. Through Christ. Through Jesus. We are able to call Abba Father. The relationship has been restored back. Now, just imagine, if we are carrying an old nature within us, a hate, anger, Enmity. If you are carrying this old nature, how can it 
how can we go in the presence of God and call God Abba Father? We are not pleasing to God in any way. So we need to correct ourselves. We need to come to a place where we say, Lord, change me. Change me inside out that I may be a person of love. Person who loves everyone the same way. Because Christ love is not partial. God's love is not partial. He loves everyone the same way. He calls everyone by name and he says, you have been wonderfully and fearfully made and I love you. And he also, Christ, the scripture says that you are the apple of my eyes. Each one, each one of you are very precious in his sight. And Jesus died for each one of us on the cross. Our sins have been forgiven. We have been justified in his, in Christ, we have been justified. So God looks at each one of us through Christ. That's how we have been justified. So what happens? We need to embrace God, the finished work of Christ, and try to lead our life which is holy, blameless, in Christ Jesus. So that does not happen automatically. It is not an automated process. It is an effort that takes place within us. It's a decision that we make to lead a life pleasing to God. Am I pleasing God in my nature, in my words, in my actions, in my, uh, in my behavior? Am I pleasing God? Am I showing Christ a reflection in me? We need to check ourselves. And how does God view at us? Let me turn to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6. To the praise of the glory of His grace, by which He made us accepted in the Beloved. Who is Beloved here? Jesus is the Beloved. So God has accepted us. God has accepted you and me in Christ. It literally means He made us accepted. Means a special honor. We have been highly favored and we have been covered by His grace. We have been covered by His grace. We have the favor of God upon us when we lead our life pleasing to God when we carry the identity of Christ upon us. So class, can I request you all to just say this out loud? Just speak out, speak this over yourself, saying, Father, I thank you that in Christ I have been granted special honor and I'm highly favored. And I'm covered by His grace, surrounded with favor, honored with blessings, and object of your grace. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. So this is what we need to claim over self every day. So when we are claiming, no one can understand ourselves better than us, isn't it? So it's okay, even when we have done things wrong, we have not worked or we have, we are not, our, our actions, our words may not be pleasing God. But again, as I said, it is a process. You need to bring yourself to the presence of God and say, Lord, these are the areas that I want to change. Bring it to God. One thing we need to remember is we cannot change ourselves by our own. It is by the grace of God. So grace of God can work within us only when we acknowledge it. When we bring ourselves to God and say, God, these are the areas I'm struggling with. These are the areas I want to see myself change. I need your grace. 
I need your grace. I need your favor. And claim it over yourself. Declare it over yourself every day, saying that I am highly favored by God. I have the special honor granted by God himself over me, and I'm covered by his grace. Wherever I go, I see God's grace surrounds me. And as how God favors me, I favor people. As how God loves me, I love everyone around me. You know, there's a condition, right? Even, even, even in our Father, saying, God, forgive me as I forgive others. If we don't forgive others, then how can we expect God to forgive? If we don't love others, how can we ask God to love us? So we need to be very careful. It is an effort that we put in. It is a decision that we make to lead our life in Christ's likeness. Saying, God, I love you. And because I love you, I love my neighbors. That's one of the commands, right? Jesus said, love your neighbors as yourself. We need to be loving. Why? Because God is love and God is dwelling in us. We need to lead our life in the nature of God. So the beloved who's here is Jesus Christ, <clears throat> is the son of his love. What do we read in John chapter 3, verse 16? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The very nature of God is love. The very nature, God is love. And whatever God does is out of his love. He loves you and me so much that he gave his only begotten son. Again, you see the nature of Jesus when he was as a human on earth. He was a man of love. He loved everyone. Matthew 14, 14 says, Jesus moved with compassion. What is compassion? What is compassion? Charisma? To extend mercy and love towards others. God is love. Jesus, the scripture says, Jesus was moved with compassion. And whenever Jesus moved with compassion, you see him doing signs, wonders, and miracles. So if we are identified in Christ, how is a person identified in Christ? By the very nature that a person carries. That's where the, the person says, hey, you are not somebody who used to be before. We may look the same, but what has changed within us when you're born again, when you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? The nature, the behavior, our character is changed. Our action, our words, our deeds are changed. So whom does it reflect? It reflects the Christ in us. The Holy Spirit who is in us will also lead us to Jesus, the very nature of Christ. That's why we call it the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, self-control patience, long-suffering. These are the fruit of the Spirit, bearing with each other. These are the fruit of the Spirit. So we need to have these nature added to our behavior, added to our nature. So what we were before, we were like, you know, we may be hated by others, but now the new identity that we have in Christ is that we have been loved by God. Maybe before we were accused, we were not accused. Maybe before we were accused, sorry. But now we have been accepted by God. Maybe before we were shamed. Now we have been honored in this new identity. We may have faced a lot of condemnation before, but right now we have been highly favored by God himself. So we are no more strangers, but we are the son, 
sonship behave uh, sonship we have in Christ Jesus. That we will move on to the next point, which talks about we have been washed, sanctified, and justified. One Corinthians chapter six verse nine to eleven. One Corinthians chapter six verse nine to eleven it says, "Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God?" Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor rivalers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed. But you were washed, you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. In the scripture, we'll see our old nature. It clearly says these are the old nature, and these old nature has no power over our new being. They do not have any power. Why? Because we have been born again. We have been identified in Christ. So they do not have any power over us. We need to believe that these are my old nature and they don't have any power over me. How do we believe it? We need to renew our mind. That's why uh, Paul time and again says we need to renew our mind. A renewed mind should believe in the new nature. That is a new nature that we have in Christ. This is the old nature. This nature has been washed, has been sanctified, and we have been justified in Christ. So this nature of mine has no power over me. And I need to renew myself, renew my mind. So how do you renew yourself? Each time when we give in to our old nature, we need to correct ourselves. How do we correct it? If we have hurt anyone, it is good for us to ask sorry with that person. You're making an effort. Asking sorry is not that you're putting yourself down or you does not become low than the other person. But by asking sorry, you're showing the Christ likeness within you. By being loved, you're showing Christ likeness within you. The other person may not be right. You don't have to go and defend yourself or hurt that person to justify your right. No, it's okay. Let go. Why are you doing that? That's the Christ nature. That's okay. That person is going through a difficult time. I can talk to that person much later. The time when he or she can understand better. We don't, we were like, we are not. And you know, in that old nature, like trying to fight our rights or trying to prove ourselves that we are right. We are being gentle, we are being loving, we are being kind. These are the new nature that we have in Christ. And we will allow this nature to grow and take root in us. Very important. As I said, it is not automatic. It doesn't happen automatically. But it is a process. It is a decision that we make. Why? Because we love Christ. Because we love Christ, we are going to show God's kind of nature in and through us. We need to know that we've been washed, we have been sanctified. What does sanctified mean? Sorry? To be made pure, anyone? Karis? Anyone from online also? You all can put a post. To be made holy, consecrated. Boys, very quiet in the class. What does sanctified mean? We have Krisha say pure. Sanctified means set apart. 
set apart for God's use. You have been set apart. We have been set apart. We are different from others. We have been set apart. So we are sanctified for the use of God. We have been washed, washed from the old self by the blood of Christ. The old nature has no power over us. We have been set apart. We have been sanctified for the work of God. And we have been made righteous. We have a right standing with God through Jesus Christ. With that, we will move on to the next. Being made righteous of God. As I said, we... <laughs> is God righteous? He is holy, he is blameless, and he is righteous. So we have been made righteous in Christ Jesus. So what is in God has been come to us. There was an exchange on the cross. Jesus took away our sin nature on him and he gave his righteousness, he gave his holiness upon us. So we have been made righteous in Christ Jesus. That when God looks at us, God sees that we have been made righteous we have a right standing through christ jesus so we see in romans chapter 3 verse 22 even the righteousness of god through faith in jesus christ to all and on all who believe for there is no difference so we have the righteousness of god how when we believe when we have accepted jesus as a lord and savior when we have this faith that because I have received Jesus as our Lord and Savior, now I have whatever is in Christ has come to me. I have this inheritance of Christ in me. See, we also see in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, we says, it says, But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and Redemption. Christ is our wisdom from God, who has become for us a righteousness, a sanctification, and redemption. Christ, we have been redeemed through Christ. We have been sanctified. We have been set apart through Christ, and we have been made righteous in Christ Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 talks about the exchange that happened on the cross, where for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So Christ, who never sinned, has taken our sin on the cross and he died on the cross. And in turn, he gave his righteousness for us. So that we may become righteous. Our relationship with God will be restored. So this is what it says here. So the righteousness of God, which is God's own righteousness, has been imparted to all of us, to all those who believe in Jesus Christ and have accepted him as the Lord and Savior. So what we need to do, we need to understand this truth. We need to embrace this truth for this truth to become live in us. Most of us struggle with our identity. It's not because you're not a believer. You are a believer. You do believe in Jesus as the Lord and Savior with the work that he did on the cross. You believe. You believe that you have been redeemed. You, be, you believe that you are, you're, uh, the old nature have passed over. You are new in Christ. You carry this new nature. But what is not happening here is we are not embracing the truth over us. This can happen only when we renew our mind. Imagine. <coughs> Sorry. For example. I know many of us are from different age group here online and here as well on campus or students even on e-learning. Despite your age, for example, if a person is 20 years old, for the last 20 years, the person has lived his life 
and the identity of what the world has given him from his birth. From his birth. He's come across hatred, he's come across rejection. And this has become the real fact in his mind and his heart. Because he has been hurt from birth, he's been rejected from his birth, and he's seen a lot of failures and rejections in his life. So as we said in the last class, what's in the bottle is what when you shake and when you pour it out comes out, right? So what is within you? Hatred, rejection, failures, no love, yearning for the human kind of love. Every man, every human yearns for love. If somebody is showing out hatredness outside, it is not because they are hurt. No. There is a kind of love, there is a kind of vacuum that they have which is not filled. And because of that, that person goes around yearning for that around people. And when they don't get that, what's in? Hatred comes out. Rejection comes out. Failure comes out. So the every reaction of a person is nothing but what they have gone through in their life. So now, how they can overcome all this? Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Through Christ. Through Christ, it is possible. That's what the scripture says. You are more than an overcomer in Christ Jesus. You have been loved. No one in this world can love you as God can love you. No one can fill that gap what God can do it for you. It's only He. So what we need to do, we need to embrace this truth. It's not going to be easy, but it's not difficult at the same time. There's no man or no human on this earth have overcome their life just like that, the minute they received Jesus as the Lord and Savior. But they've gone through the process. They have decided the old nature has no power over them. They have embraced to this new nature. They have made the choice to lead a life that is loving. They've made a choice to get the fruit of the Spirit to be the nature of their own. They've embraced it. And that's how you can overcome. That's how you can lead a life that is pleasing God. So the only way that we can lead a new life identified in Christ is by embracing the truth that the scripture says. The enemy may bombard you with the lies of this world, but then you go with what the word of God says. You're loved. You're an overcomer. You can lead a new life. Your sins have been forgiven. There is no more gap within you. You have been loved by the Most High God. You don't have to search for that love through any man, any human. You have been identified in Christ. You have a new identity. Your identity is not on the position that you carry. No. It's in Christ what we have. So when we have these things set right. You see yourself flow in the nature of God, in the fruit of the Spirit. So we have been justified, been made righteous through faith. <laughs> Sorry. What happens when we lead our life that is pleasing God? What happens? We are exercising the faith that we have. We are exercising the right that we have with God. You know, being loving is the birthright that we have. The nature of God is our birthright. Because now you are the child of God. So we need to behave as a child of God. So we have this access that is faith access of faith, God kind of faith in us. And we stand in the place of grace before God. And we are full of joy because of God, because of the work that Jesus did on the cross. Now we have a hope in our life, which was not there before, has become now into us.
because we have been justified, been made righteous in Christ Jesus. So in Romans chapter 5, verse 9, Romans 5, verse 9, page 38, much more than then, having now been justified by his blood, we have been saved from wrath through him. Colossians chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. And by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven. Having made peace through the blood of his cross, and you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled. Despite our old nature, we have been reconciled to God through the work that Jesus did on the cross. Jesus died on the cross. Jesus has paid a price, his own blood. He has paid a price to redeem you and me. There's a cost involved to redeem us from that old nature. We need to know that. We need to understand. We need to, we need to. We need to understand that Jesus died on the cross. He shed his complete blood on the cross to redeem you and me. We have been redeemed. We need to get this revelation that the work on the cross was done to redeem you and me. He has redeemed us from the clutches of the enemy. So when he has redeemed us from the enemy's hand, our nature should not be reflecting any way of his kind. Our nature should reflect God because we have been redeemed. We have been accepted by Christ. And, and you know, we have the Holy Spirit living in us. We have God living in us. So if God is living in us, our nature should reflect the God kind of nature. love the fruit of the Spirit in us. So we have some of the practical implication of being justified and being made righteous here. We have list them out here. That knowing and understanding, these are the certain things that we should know and understand, that there is no condemnation against us. And so we live free from any sense of guilt, shame, Accusation or condemnation. We are on page 38. So there is no more condemnation that we have because we are in Christ. We have a boldness now. We have a boldness to enter into God's presence. How? As a child of God. We have a fellowship that we can have with God now. Our relationship has been restored back to God, that which was not there before. We reign in life and we have dominion over our life situation. Why? Because we have been brought out from the sickness, from the sin, from that old nature. And we can confront Satan. We confront Satan as king and master over him and his demons. And that has no power over us because we have Christ in us who is much greater. That's what the scripture says. Greater is he who is greater. Greater is he who is in us than the one who is in the world. We have the greater God who is living in us. So Satan has no power over us. And we need to embrace that truth. We should be more careful in the fellowship that we have with people. Be very careful because this will affect our mind and our heart. So there is no condemnation in Christ. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, There is no more, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. So what a joy it is for us to know that there is no condemnation over us. When we live a life in Christ, we have been accepted. We have this new life. So 
to freely embrace it. We need to embrace this life in Christ and demonstrate that life in Christ in and through us over others. How? By not judging over others. What does the scripture say? Do not judge, for you will not be judged. God is the only judge. So allow the Lord to judge, not ourselves. Okay, and do not reject anyone. God saying, love your neighbor as your self. So we have a new boldness that we can enter the presence of God because of Christ, what he did on the cross. So Hebrew 4.16 says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We have this new boldness where we can approach God through Christ Jesus. One John chapter three verse twenty. They're on page forty-one. One John chapter three verse twenty and twenty-one. For it says, "For if our heart condemns us, for if our heart condemns us." God is greater than our heart and knows all things. What does it say here? God is greater than our heart and he knows all things. He's all knowing, omniscient. The second verse 21 says, Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. That means we have allowed God to work in and through us. And there is no more condemnation in our heart. And we have this confidence. So how? We need to exercise that in us. So this is what Apostle John has been teaching us. To live a life from self-condemnation as well. We should not condemn ourselves. So we must maintain a heart that does not condemn us. Since what enables us to have confidence toward God. Walking in love. Walking in righteousness. Gives us the confidence before God. So what is it? We need to make an effort. We need to make a decision to walk in love, walk in the righteousness of God. Hebrew chapter 10, verse 19 to 22 says, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us, through the veil that is his flesh and having a high priest over the house of God let us draw near with a pure heart true heart in full assurance of God having a heart sprinkled from all evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water here it talks about the scripture talks about the boldness that we can have to enter the holiest of holy that is through Jesus Christ through the blood of Jesus. Then. And we, why? Because we have been washed, we have been justified, and we have been made right, righteous in Christ Jesus so that we have this new assurance that we have in full faith. We can walk in boldness and in confidence before God. So what is it when we talk about boldness and confidence before God? How we can walk in boldness and confidence before God if our way of life is not pleasing God? How can we do that? The scripture says, one who walks in the fear of the Lord can walk in confidence. If you fear God, when you have this consciousness of God is watching over you, God is watching over our very thought, our words, and our mind. The word of God says, no, man looks at the outward appearance, God looks at the heart. God knows when we walk in this knowledge, when we walk with the fear of God, we will keep ourselves from hurting anyone. We will keep ourselves from sinning. We will watch every step of our life. And when we do that, when we consciously walk our life with the fear of God and 
uh, uh, every step that we walk, we walk um, pleasing to God. You see, there is a confidence that comes within us that we can come into the presence of God with a pure heart and say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. Because God is the one who looks at the attitude. He knows our thoughts. He says, I know every word even before it is formed on your tongue. He knows it. So there's nothing that we can hide or manipulate with God. We cannot twist and turn our words with God, isn't it? No, I never meant this way. What I meant was actually like this. No, you cannot do it. Because God knows everything. When we ha lead our life with the fear of God, we'll have this confidence to walk in the presence of God with boldness of God saying, God, you are your daughter, you are your son. I've come into your presence. Accept me as I am. So that we can reign in life because of the gift of righteousness that Jesus did on the cross so that we may not be offended but then lead a life that is pleasing to God. And yes, the armor of righteousness has been made available. As we see in Ephesians 6, 13 to 14, we see that the whole armor of God we have the access to. The whole armor of God that we can withstand the evil day or withstand the enemy, the veils of the enemy. And also in 2 Corinthians 6, 7, we see by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand or on the left. So this is a spiritual armor that has been spoken here. We have this armor of God available to us to withstand the dynamic forces or the enemy's plan. And when we have this armor of God, we know that we have this right standing with God. How? When we fellowship with God with righteousness, we have our right. We know that we are the child of God. We have a birthright in God. And with that, we have been justified. We have been made righteous. So <laughs> with that I end the session. Before we could end the session, let's declare this over ourselves. Let's believe the truth. Let's embrace this truth saying that I've been justified with God. I have a right standing with God. And I need to embrace this truth to lead a life that is pleasing to God. Okay. So with that, let's declare it over ourselves. God justified and made me righteous. Freely by his grace. And because of Christ's work on the cross, this qualifies me to live a joyful life without any sense of condemnation, where I can have a fellowship with God, with freedom and intimate. I can boldly ask of God. And reign over my life matters. And confront Satan and his authority over me and over my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Is there anyone who would like to add anything to today's session? You would like to say anything? Okay, with that, we end this session. Thank you. Please go through all the scriptures, claim it over yourself, that which is applicable to you, and claim it and embrace the truth of Christ in you. Thank you for joining in. God bless. Thank you.